Okay, we're out here on a fine Sunday morning at our Savoy's Pine Paradise Tree Farm. Um, actually doing the market. We just uh, filmed a little bit about the paint guns. And we put up a video last week about the prescription. And now we're right into it. We've probably marked about 30 acres so far. And we thought we'd pause here and just illustrate the process. On one hand, so this is a lot that was heavily cut, uh, I think probably in the, sometime in the 1980s. Trees reached breast height, you know, about 40 years ago, and the soil here is excellent. It's a northern hardwood soil, placed series, and this pine here exemplifies why we think this is such a wonderful property. We got 65 acres of this stuff. This pine is 11 inches. The biggest branch is as big as your little finger, and these trees are 80 feet tall in 40 years. Okay, so the site index here is extremely high. It's almost off the chart for white pine. Um, the regenerate, you can see it's densely stocked. The basal areas here, of, if you measure all sizes, is up around 200. It's about 150 of merchantable trees. So this is the, we're trying to, uh, the state is barely operable, even though we've got these nice crop trees, because a lot of the volume that needs to come out of here is, is lower quality wood. Fortunately, uh, the markets for pine pulpwood have really improved here in the last uh, half a year or so. The mills really want it, so the price has gone up some, so we can actually harvest it now. And we're marking quite a lot of it, and you'll see that what's, that how that makes a big difference here as we go around this um, illustration here. So this tree, 10.9 inches, classic crop tree. So we want these, we want about 70, 60, 70 square feet of these per acre. So six or seven in to a 10 factor prism tally, uh, at roughly about 100 trees per acre. So that's about a 20 foot spacing. So that's really, when you're doing crop tree management, it's a guiding philosophy. So we have, because this is complicated and dense and there's lots of subtly different situations here, you're always trading off. The biggest trees, of course, are gonna be the worst quality trees. They'll have the biggest branches. The smaller trees, the smaller codominants will be better formed, but they, their crowns will be small. So this tree, because the site is so high here, the stand is growing very rapidly, differentiating. It's, we need to really be in here, release these trees, but not too heavily because they're so tall we don't want any wind damage. So we have to thread that needle here. So we are taking our time and we're marking, often marking crop trees in yellow here, just so we uh, focus our work. So that, that's what we're doing. Let's just focus on this one. So we have a pine crop tree, an obvious um, candidate. And so what we do is we look up and around the crown. Any uh, tree in the main canopy, another codominant tree, that's touching this crown that's not a crop tree, in other words, it's closer than 20 feet, should, should get marked if it's merchantable. So we look up and... Immediately, we, we look over here, we see an intermediate pine, probably, what, six inches in diameter, not a saw log pine, but now, because we have the pulp market, we can sell that tree. In fact, look at, there's almost no paper on it. They'll get, what, two 20, uh, you know, two 12-foot sticks out of that at least, pulp wood. So, uh, so crown thinning, uh, we look over in the back here, we have another tree like that. We mark, we like to mark on both sides of the tree, just because you never know where the trails are gonna be here. Um, and now we're facing another dilemma. We, it's a classic case here where we have a well-formed tree of about seven inches and another much more dominant tree by vigor alone would certainly be the crop tree, um, and I think it's going to be, right? Uh, so this this one is going to get left. We, we It's barely not competing with the previous crop tree. It's a little closer than 20 feet, but not a lot. We look up, and lo and behold, that pine there is competing with that tree. We mark that one. Cut. Get it from the back. I mean, that's a beautiful tree. I wish we had trees like that on a lot of our other woodlots all over the place. They, they would be the prize growing stock. But here, 
where we are fortunate that uh, we have even better ones that are more dominant. So that goes for the pulp market. Here we have an obvious case of trees pistol butted, had for some reason has a defect at the base. Um, the other species besides pine in this lot is red spruce. When I look at this red spruce here, this is a large one for the lot, I can tell just because of this heavy branch structure that this was a residual sapling when the land was cut. Pine came from seed. This one would have had a head start and, that's, and it had no competition locally, so it's up in the main canopy. Spruce prices now are as high as they've ever been. I mean, they're just almost off the chart. Uh, this is at least a 12 inch spruce. The quality is not that high and it's, com and it's actually Most of the spruce here is stratified in the sea strata below the pine This one because it had this height advantage is up in the main canopy and competing with the crop trees So yeah, that plus the, the high price that it's now selling for means that this spruce is going to go right Oh, I see there my gun is jammed. Here we go handy dandy reversible nozzle and off we go. Okay, we come over here, we see another crop tree now because we've released that first crop tree by cutting the spruce and the other intermediate spruces. If we look for our next crop tree, the next nicest one is this is one here we just measured as 8.9 inches. Beautiful, uh, co-dominant, but not particularly vigorous. Definitely needs release. This is why we're here, is to, is to uh, release these things. So immediately, we, again, we look up. Another uh, intermediate pine right there. Uh, they're taking pine logs down to six inch top. This is probably not quite big enough to get a 12 foot log, six inches. So this is going to be in the pulp pile as well. It's going to be cut with the Ponzi scorpion king. They're just going to eat this stuff right up. It's going to be one of the most productive jobs they've had in a while because of these tall conifers. They just love this stuff. They can limb it easily. Mark the back side of that spruce. Okay, so we have that. Now we come over here, we see, we have an old, it's like an old skid trail from the harvest 40 years ago. We have another beautiful pine lurking. Um, <coughs> excuse me, only maybe 12 feet from the other one. But because it's on there, this big opening in back of it, I think we're also going to keep this one. And then you get into spruces like this, which are stratified below it. But some of these are so crowded by the other pines and other spruces that they have actually lost a lot of their crown and they're, they're tall enough now that they don't have much of an ability to respond. I'm of course a big fan of releasing spruce, but this is a good example of one that I think we should be also be taken. So we're gonna mark that um, partly again because of the value of it. This spruce here is just far enough away and just tucked down into the sea stratum that there's no reason to cut this. This is nice growing stock. This will get released by the marking here. Um, okay, we've got that pine out. Here's a real problem, uh, and I don't know, this is one of these things you run into. Again, by the road, we have a, two beautiful pine crop trees right together. If we we're cutting this with a cable skitter crew hand felling, we could probably cut one of these trees easy enough. I don't think he can get his harvesting head in there, so we're just gonna leave both of those right now as crop as sort of a one single crown of a crop tree um like the back side come over here we have yet another even somewhat bigger crop tree a, a little rougher but you know also uh, 20 feet from that one we have a pulpwood tree behind it here uh there it's sticking up impeding its crown development it gets faded. Uh, we look over here. This is the obvious thing. We don't have a lot of this here, but you can see a large uh, quaking aspen tree. Uh, that clearly, that's even overtopping the pine. Clearly, that's going to go because that's just pulpwood, and you know we have good markets for that as well. Um, this spruce here is a good question, right? That one's got just enough crown, and it's just far enough away from the pine. I'm going to leave it. It's not really hindering it, it will get released by cutting the aspen. Let's hang on to that as growing stock. Another spruce, we're gonna keep that as a crop tree. Uh, I guess we've got the, what we want marked here right in the center of this little sample point. Uh, for now, let's take a sample, let's take a sample. Let's see what we have. 
for stocking for basal area. Here's my pole here. Okay, one, two, cut, 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 three, four, cut, cut, five, six, seven, eight spruce. Seven of those are pine, one spruce. Um, I think that's it. There may be some trees farther in. Let's see, pine. I see one pine that I missed that should be marked. So yeah, we have our seven pines and one spruce. We have a residual here of at least 80, most of which is pine, and we're going to call that good. Had we cut those two pines down there as a clump, we'd probably be a little understocked. I'm going to mark this. Both of these trees. Okay, we're going to call that good.